Hello, my love. It's Nicole Charnel here. Welcome back to my channel. And as you can see from today's title, we are talking about my 12 week year and starting a new 12 week year going into the year 2024. So if you don't know what the 12 week year is, this is the perfect time to start one. A 12 week year is a system to help you with your goal setting and achieving. It narrows down a year into 12 weeks, giving you the momentum to make it through the 12 weeks as well as focus on your goals and achieve them. The major premise of the book is that you can get more done in 12 weeks than most people can get done in a year. So taking that and applying that to goal setting is all about what the book is. And of course, the book is called The 12 Week Year by Brian, Brian P. Moran and Michael Lettington. So I've done the 12 week year consecutively for the past. Actually, let's double check. We're just going to pull up my notion. I have tracked the 12 week year in my notion every time that I've done it. So I've done the 12 week year five times already. So I've actually surpassed my year year of doing this what we year uh, and I didn't even know this I didn't even celebrate it anyway jumping right into this video I'm just coming off of a 12 week year it actually ended December 13th so in this video I'm going to review my past 12 week year I'm also going to tell you the things that I've learned and the things that I'm going to change and then lastly I'm going to show you my 12 week year for going into the new year which is 2024. So I've already set up my 12 week year for the um, for my next set. Uh, I've just named it winter 2024. But I'm going to go to the bottom where my archives are. And we're going to first talk about the previous 12 week year, which would have been the fall of 2023. So quickly going through this. Uh, if you want a template for the 12 week year, I will link mine down below. This will be the newer version of the of my template showing you what I'm looking at right now. However, I do have an old version. So if you want to check that out as well, um, it's in a previous video, I'll link that down below. There, it just changes my task, but we'll explain that in a moment. My goals for my previous 12 week year were to do a full handstand and start stretching for splits. Uh, second, to pay off $200 of my credit card and to save $100 for my TA business, which is going to be my travel advisory business. And then to finalize and promote my travel agent business. So these are my three goals for my 12 week year. Quickly going through this, I'm just going to tell you now, I did not achieve I, I achieved one of these things, which was to pay off my credit card. And honestly, one, it was because of the time that I chose to do this 12 week year. Not only was Thanksgiving in this, but I also traveled for work. And then I also went on my family vacation. Those were three major um, weeks going in or within my 12 week year that I did not complete my tasks. And I knew I wasn't going to complete my tasks because I wasn't in my regular home space and I wasn't focused on those things. And then on top of that, there's things leading up to those trips. There's other things that I focused on. So I did a poor job in this whole week year. I'm not going to lie. Not, I can't, I can't even, can't even lie. So coming down to my tasks, as you can see, first of all, th I, there's weeks that I have 0% of completing my tasks. And what I mean by 0% is those, that's the percentage in which I completed the tasks that I had during the week. So for example, if I had 10 tasks, I completed, if I completed two of them, that's 20%. If I completed eight of them, that's 80%. In, within the 12 week year, you want an 85% or more of completion of your tasks to be able to achieve your goal. Tracking your score is super important within the 12 week year. It gives yourself a sense of accountability. And then, and not only just, it's not just another person looking in and saying, oh, no, you are holding yourself accountable against yourself. And that's why you're scoring your week. So as you can see here, I did pretty poor. I mean, I started off 70%, 50%, 60%. Um, and I did not improve at all. As you can see, week eight and week nine have nothing. They have nothing in them. Um, and like I said, th those are probably the week that week nine, I think was Thanksgiving. And then week eight was the week that I went away for my, yeah, week eight was the week I went away from my work. And then I think week 11 was my, was my, um, vacation week. 
yeah, there was a lot going on. I think that's def it's definitely something important to look at when you're doing a 12 week year, like what's going on within those 12 weeks. And it also is beneficial because like if you look at yearly or annual goals, you're just taking the whole year, right? So many things happen within the year. And yes, you can be working on your goal, working on your goal, and then you have a vacation and you just drop your goal. And then you have something happen at your work and you drop the goal again. So yes, it's so spread out. You can't like narrow it down to say, okay, I'm going to work on my goals consistently for this 12 weeks. And then at the end of the 12 weeks, I have a vacation or at the end of the 12 weeks, uh, I'm going somewhere. That is ideal. And I think that's another advantage to the 12 week year is that you can put it on any 12 weeks of the year. And I should have used my own advice because my next 12 weeks said I have another vacation, but we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Those are my scores for my first 12 week year. And just to let you know, having a rigorous review within um, within tracking your weeks or within your 12 week year is a, it's essential for knowing accurately where you stand with your goals. If you don't take time to really look at yourself and really just grade yourself and then you can see, okay, I did 50% good. You know in your mind what you want it to be and you know that you wanna achieve this goal. So then you will work harder to then get to that 80%, get to that 85% at least so you can achieve the goal. The whole thing is about achieving the goal. That's why you set goals because you want to achieve them. You're giving yourself that motivation. So like I said, overall, I really only achieved one thing out of my goals. And that was the $200 toward my credit card payment. So um, I did pay off $200. And I know $200 is a low amount of money, but I had vacation savings in there. I had Thanksgiving in there. I had um, my birthday was in there. Like I had a lot of things going in within that 12 weeks. So like looking back also, maybe like literally I can't do or I shouldn't do a 12 week year within the last two weeks of like the uh yeah 12 week year within the last two week two months of the year just because of the holidays that are in there and then my birthday is in there so to me it just it's just not the move it's just not the move for me but that's not not for everybody that's a gr another great thing about the 12 week year what which I mentioned already about the 12 week year is you can put it wherever is beneficial to you. Now I'm gonna talk about the things that I learned from this 12 week year and the things that I'm going to change going forward. The first thing I learned is about my tracking system. So as you can see within my template, I had like a little um, box where I tracked my uh, tracked my score for the week. Within that box, there's a little drop down. So I'm back in there. Within the box, there's a drop down. I'm just going to show you week one drop down, and then I have the list of my tasks, and then I check them off. I wasn't giving myself good lead indicators. I was giving myself lag indicators. Lag in indicator is measure of the end result. So for example, the losing of the 10 pounds. And then the lead indicator is the action that you do to lose the 10 pounds or to get to the result giving myself more lag indicators which was hindering me within my tasks so that's definitely a major thing that I'm going to change going into this next 12 week also my template with that um, I adjusted it very slightly and of how I did uh I, I adjusted it I adjusted my template of how I'm tracking as well, which is this that you're seeing now, the way I line up my tasks and how they're laid out. This is much better than what I had before, which was like an actual table where I was going in and like doing the little categories. It just wasn't beneficial for how I do my tasks. Like I'm, I'm a very checkbox type of person. Like if I have a task, I want the checkbox, checkbox there. I want to be able to check off the check and then just go with it. With a table, it wasn't giving me that. So that's why I changed to this table format. Lastly is my mindset. So since I'm like so far into doing the 12 week year, I had I had read the book about a year and a half ago. So I needed to go back and refresh myself and give give myself just a little refresher course of the 12 week year and the benefits of it, how to do it, how to set it up, the major things you should use, major key points, right? Because when I and also when I did that, I noticed why I had holes in my current system. I wasn't I wasn't using my tasks that I set up with my time blocking system. They have to go together. 
the one major part of the 12 week year is to have three specific types of blocks within your schedule or time blocks. You want a strategy block, you want a buffer block, and then you want a breakout block. The strategy block is at least three hours of time where you just focus on the task at hand. Three hours, no distractions, or mentally, you gotta minimize the distractions, right? You put your phone on, do not disturb, put, put your phone away, you know? Three hours of just you focusing on the task. Your buffer, my, your buffer block is about an hour, maybe two hours, mostly just an hour of when you address the interruptions that may have came up within your strategy block. So say you're working, someone gives you a call, asks you for something. If you need to pick up the, the call, okay, cool. But you need to tell that person, hey, let me get to that at this time after your strategic block is complete. And then within your buffer block, you handle that task or that interruption that stopped you from focusing on your strategic block. And then last is your breakout block. This can be three hours as well, like or more, but you don't want multiple breakout blocks within your 12 week year. Remember your 12 week years, you're taking your whole year and you're breaking and smushing it down into 12 weeks. That means you have to be go, go, go for those 12 weeks. You have to be focused on your tasks. You can't have too many breakout blocks because of breakout block is when you just chill you relax you're gonna do the thing that gets you um in chill mode so for me it's reading i'm gonna pick up my novel during my breakout time i'm going to go out and go out to dinner during my breakout time you just can't have too many of them because it's going to it's going to hinder you from getting towards your goal so that's something major that I wasn't, I didn't realize that I wasn't doing it anymore. Like I, I have a time blocking system. I have it on my calendar. I, I schedule my time blocks, but it wasn't until I refreshed myself with the book, realized that I wasn't connecting my time blocks to my 12 week year tasks and then going forward with them. They were just two separate things. <laughs> Okay, so those are the things that I've learned. So now we're going to talk about my next 12 week year and what, um, what I'm gonna do, my goals and all that. One of the major things about the 12 week year is periodization. And that is just focusing on one goal for a period of time. This is what, what this is one of the key things what makes the 12 week year so beneficial and makes it work. You're not focusing on 12 months worth of goals. You're focusing on 12 weeks worth of goals. So that may causes you to one, you have to narrow down your goal to something feasible that you can complete within the 12 weeks, 12 weeks, as long as you hustle, as long as you focus, right? and um, something also that you can measure within those 12 weeks. And also you just want to remember to plan out your time accordingly and to plan for your plan for your distractions. And this is once again when I talked about the blocks, the buffer block and the breakout block are just as important as the, the strategic block. So for your time we're working is just as important as your chill time. Something to remember, something to carry on throughout the 12 weeks. So let's jump into what my 12 week year goals are and how I'm going to achieve my goals. So we are in my 12 week year for winter 2024. At the top, you can see my dates, which are December 26th to March 18th. Yes, I am starting before the beginning of the year. My major reason is I want to get out of the habit of annualized goals, which are having a goal for the whole year and also trying to say, oh, this is quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four type of thinking. Remember, this is all about changing your mindset on your goals. So this this is something that I'm using. This is something that's going to help me change my mindset on my goals. From here, right here, from vision to reality. And then I have something called WAM meetings. Now, WAM meetings are something, a tool to help you within your 12 week year. And that are, those are weekly accountability meetings. The major thing about this is you need someone else to talk to while you're doing this goal setting. Now, they don't have to be doing a 12 week year with you. My person, uh, my WAM, uh, my wham partner is someone who doesn't do this whole week year with me um and we just talk about our goals and the things that we're going to focus on and stuff like that but there's the point is to have someone to help you stay accountable someone who's going to tell you okay well maybe you should do this to help you or someone who's going to say well you got to kick it in gear because you only have 12 weeks left even though they're not doing the 12 week year so it's completely fine you just need someone who 
will help keep you accountable. Next, I have one year goals. So once again, this is how I take the idea of annualized goals and I break them down to 12 weeks. I still have an annualized goal based off of my vision, not like an actual goal, but like, like a word of what the goal would be. So for example, to be at my goal weight of 160, how can I break that down into 12 weeks? Okay, 12 weeks, I want to lose 10 pounds. Taking that a step further about mindset, I made a little sentence that I can say to help me manifest what is going to happen to help me get to this goal. I am someone who prioritizes health and fitness. This will help me reach my next goal, okay? Next one year goal is to have an emergency fund of 5k breaking that down to 12 weeks will be save 1k emergency fund. I am someone who makes smart financial decisions and is always saving money. You see what we're doing here? We are speaking it into existence. All right. The last one is the last one year goal is to have multiple streams of streams of income. This is honestly something that's been on my soul week year so many times. The same thing with my fitness and my financial goals, but um, I really want to make it happen, I, especially as a single person. I have one single income. I am the sole provider for my family, which is me and my two kids. Um, I need to make some more money and I need to keep it consistent and I want the longevity of it. So I need to create some more streams of income. So breaking that down to 12 weeks, I want to increase my average watch percentage by 5%. This one I'm having a hard time putting into words or putting into an affirmation. Uh, so that's why that portion is blank. But I wanna say something like, I have a successful YouTube channel. I don't know, something like that. I don't know, <laughs> but we'll see, <laughs> but we'll see. I don't know, I'll probably change that. I also have another idea for my second stream of income. But I'm also having, I'm having a hard time putting it into a 12 week goal. Like um, I want to start a travel agent business and I could just use that, but like to start the business, it's as simple as, or I guess as complex as um, purchasing my like travel agent license and then like starting up a social media and then start promoting and stuff like that. And I'm just not sure if I wanna make it my 12 week year goal so that is a stream of income that i am going to get started in but first i want to focus on this so that is going to be my last 12 week year goal and this is something else that i struggle with i tend to change it and like think of something else in like in the middle of my 12 week year and then i'm just like girl you're never gonna reach your goals if you just don't stay focused to the thing that you're trying to work on come on girl get it together so <laughs> Moving on. So then I break my goals down one by one. So first goal is fitness. So, um, and my first strategy within my goal is I wanna do at least three workouts a week. Um, I wanna stick to an eating plan. So whatever it is going to be, I need to stick to it. And then I want one day of stretching. Okay. So goal number two is a financial goal. So I want to do a weekly and a monthly budget. And once again, these are the strategies for me to achieve the goal, not the tasks. Um, I do a weekly and a monthly budget, get cash every week. I found that for me, it's more beneficial to have cash. I stick to my budget more. And this will also help with another strategy I have, uh, which is kind of like subconscious or yeah, subconscious saving. Um, and the next strategy is to save $80 per check for my emergency fund. Now this, ooh, this is gonna be a lot, but I know I have to push myself. Like save $1,000 within 12 weeks if I save at least this amount. And then the last one is to save a dollar, a dollar in, uh, in jar consistently. That's not worded correctly. What it is, is I have a dollar savings jar. So at this, um, so I'm getting cash every week. So every time I have dollar bills, I'm gonna put them in the saving bar jar instead of spending them. So at the end of the night, I come home and I empty my wallet of the dollar bills, and then I move on with my money. So I get a certain amount of cash every week, and that is gonna help me subconsciously save money because I'm taking all the dollars out and putting them in a jar kind of like cash stuffing at like in the most loose term. So goal number three is a business goal or a side hustle goal. So um, this is when I was 
yeah this is when i was trying to focus on my travel agent so uh yeah my travel agent goal so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete these first two and i'm going to replace them with more uh youtube focus goals on to goal number three so the first one we have is analyze my youtube analytics so taking time um each week maybe multiple times a week i'm not sure of the duration yet i know i need to do it at least weekly so let's do that at least weekly analyze um my youtube analytics okay the next one next strategy is to research the best ways to increase increase watch time so that will include watching someone else's video on increasing watch time maybe reading a blog or listening to a podcast about increasing youtube watch time and then uh have youtube planning sessions for content weekly this is just a planning session with me personally like i just sit down and i want to plan my videos i try to do it for the whole month sometimes i struggle with that so i decided to make it weekly so it's something that i keep my hands on so i can build the habit lastly is i want to add bookish content to my channel so if you don't know if you haven't been watching my channel lately i've been watching i have been talking more about books and reading and amping up my reading um as self-care so i've just been doing more reading overall and i'm just been loving also the, like the videos of people talking about the books that they're reading talking about the books they're going to read sharing everything like that like i've just been loving that so i want to add it to my channel and i want it to make sense so I think just taking the time to brainstorm it and then adding it and just go ahead and adding it in. At first I was like, I'm not changing my whole channel. I'm not trying to niche down um, because planning and productivity is currently my niche. Like that's what I've been focusing on, planning and being productive in my life. Um, and I wanna keep that niche. So I think just, so I just wanna add the bookish content. And um, I think that'll also help with my, with my watch time and getting it to continue to go higher so those are my goals for my 12 week year and then at the bottom here will just be the section where i add in my weekly tasks based off of my strategies so this was another mindset shift that i needed to have was that my monthly or my goal strategies are not my weekly tasks i need to once again take that strategy and create a task from it so one of the strategies are to do research on how to to increase my watch time so the task will be watch one video this week about watch time something like that like an, a tangible task remember lead indicators versus lag indicators focusing more on the lead indicators these are the things that make the needle move these are the things that help you achieve the goal and of course time blocking will be added in to my schedule and all of that but i'm going to be doing a plan with me a video to show you how i'm going to be time blocking not just digitally but i'm also going to be incorporating paper back into my planning sessions i've just noticed as the last six months of the year when i transitioned fully to being a digital planner there was some stuff that was slipping through the cracks and i know it has to do with the fact that i wasn't taking hold of my planner writing down stuff like literally just writing it down because I know I know that because brain dumps were just so beneficial to me starting to plan so it was kind of there but it just wasn't there fully so now I'm incorporating a paper planner back into my planning for the week and the month and all that so that is it for my 12 week plan going into the new year uh as like as I said I'm starting on December 26th for this plan um and if you need a template like I said, I will link my template down below. If you have any questions on the best way to use the template, the best way to achieve the goals, just leave me a comment down below and I will get back to you. Let me know if you guys want like an updated summary of what the 12 week year is. I will uh, do a dedicated video for that. Just let me know down in the comments down below because like I said, I needed a refresher. So if you need a refresher as well for what the 12 week year is and how can I use it and how can it be beneficial to me and my goal setting desires, make sure you leave me a comment down below and I will do that for you. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. I hope you have a happy new year. And if, and if you're getting ready for the new year, I will link my previous video on the channel of how I wrapped up. That also has a Notion template in it as well for wrapping up and reflecting for the previous year so you can get ready for the new year. Thanks for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.